Life on the streets is one of the most miserable things that I've ever been through. Where I was staying outside was in the clover leaf of a highway. It was very cold. I thought I was going to freeze to death. She lost her children. She lost her housing. And she lost herself along the way. New Directions is a long-term treatment program for veterans, and our mission is to help them return to families and the community. When you leave here, you'll have a bank account, you'll have a job, and you'll be ready to make your move to rejoin society. To have money coming in again, and it's steady income, and going to work every day, you know, that feels really great. I'm fully employed, I'm going to school, I have the choir, I'm, I have my service. Who'd have thought it? I went to the Marine Court at uh, the age of 19 because I noticed that the opportunities in my neighborhood was just not available at all. Something about the Marines just allured me, so I decided to go in and, and I, did, I did fairly well. I, I really liked it. I, I loved being in the Marine Corps. I could see that my life began to change when I was stationed in Korea for a while at the at the DMZ in a in a town called Yechon. You know, started off with uh, with with alcohol usage, which was in a, in a way kind of sanctioned. I somewhat kept a lid on it, even though toward the end of my enlistment, I started getting in trouble. Um, and after I got out and there was no limits, that's, that's when my, my addictions and, and, and substance abuse and in my, in my knowledge now, my, my, my mental illness, they all caused my performance to, to spiral. After discharge, I wound up working for a, uh, a company building uh, helicopters. I wound up eventually resigning before I got terminated my, my drug and alcohol usage was a constant progression until such time as I became completely homeless. But you never see it coming. I grew up in Fairfax, Virginia, near George Mason University, and then I moved to Salisbury, Maryland and finished two bachelor's degrees, and then I went in the Navy. I did meteorology in the Navy, brief pilots, did flight planning. I loved my job. You know, I wanted to make it more of a long-term commitment to the Navy since I thought this is what I want to do. And then I ended up meeting my husband and that changed things quite a bit. He was in the Venezuelan Navy. He was here with two of his ships from Venezuela. They were upgrading their ships. And we started dating and we got married and we had a child. I didn't have anyone to take care of my, my daughter to, so I could be deployed. As a result, I left the Navy and December, I got an honorable discharge, and then by February, I went to Venezuela to be with my husband. It didn't work out very well with my husband, but then I came back to the U.S. My daughter was a year old, and I was five months pregnant with my son. I had no place to go. I called um, my parents, and they said just for two days I could stay. I called my sister. She said no. When I got to the airport from Venezuela, I went right to a shelter. I never received any child support, any help for the children. It was very frustrating because it was like, my income was their sole support. He never gave me money and um, that was making it very difficult for me. The county was called because I wasn't providing, um, you know, enough financial support and stable housing. And I was losing jobs because every time the kids got sick, I had to take time off work. So that's when they intervened, and so by September, the, the county had called their father in Venezuela and asked him to come and get the children, and he did. The last time I saw them was September 10th, and they left September 11th in 2008. Life on the streets is one of the most miserable things that I've ever been through, having to use the bathroom behind a dumpster 
and then hoping to find some trash in the dumpster to, you know, to, to use as a cleaning mechanism. You know, there's those things you become, you become accustomed to. I remember having rats jumping all over me and then I just wake up and oh, it's, it's a rat and then I just, you know, just kind of cover up tighter so that it doesn't get under the cover with me and going back to sleep. But there is nothing more miserable than when it rains and you have nowhere to go. Unless you've experienced it like the homeless, you'll never know what that means. Every time it rains, I still think about the fact that three or four people are, are going to die. But imagine being completely soaked and, and, you, and you have to keep it on and it just dries, dries on you hours later. But at times like those, you don't care if you live or die. I had my apartment through August 1st, 2008, and then I was outside. Where I was staying outside was in the clover leaf of a highway, and it wasn't like a normal campground. You're not supposed to be camping there. Uh, this is the off ramp for the highway, and uh, it's the only place that we would actually drop stuff off for the camp and then bring stuff into the camp. It was tough going back there at nighttime with the, there's a lot of branches, a lot of low branches and having to duck through the branches. I lived here from August through December. I mean, it wasn't a long time, but it was definitely long enough for me. You know, every single night, I mean, it gets a little tiring, you know, this is your home. You have to wait till like you can go in here quietly, you know, it's like not a lot of fun. Well, the, there was two large snowstorms that winter that I was outside. The snow was building up on the back side of the tent. I was pushing the snow off the tent. I was afraid the tent was gonna collapse. It was very cold. I thought it was gonna freeze to death because it was very cold that night. One day, uh, I was cooking outside and um, the, st the stove, because it was so cold outside, the stove was kind of close, because it kind of went us in the heat to go into the tent and it was kind of too close to the tent. And uh, the stove had like a problem and it caught on fire. The whole tent filled up with smoke and I was inside of it. And there was a huge fire, it was enormous. The whole front part of the, of the tent was on fire. And I actually thought I was gonna die that day. I was always looking for things I could use, just trying to think about how to waterproof my backpack, um, try and keep dry, just looking for strategies of survival, I guess you could say. My family didn't know that if I was dead or alive for five years. They hadn't seen me in 10 years. What consumed my life more than anything else was trying to get and attain more drugs to feed my ever-increasing drug dependency. At three o'clock in the morning, I walked down this street. Actually, I think I was going to buy some drugs because they were selling some up in somewhere up in here. And I remember walking and I couldn't believe it. And I looked at all four corners and somebody's being robbed at the same time. And I said, man, what am I doing here? A lot of times it's too dangerous to sleep. Plus the, the sheer madness of, of the substance abuse kept you running to attain more. So everything all together, I would be up. One time I was, I was awake for eight days at a time. If I knew that I was really tired and need, uh, needed a few days of sleep, this is where I'd come. I'd come somewhere where I wouldn't have to worry about cars running over me. I could be out behind this dumpster and, and be out of all of the, the, the traffic. I would be away, far enough away from other homeless where I would be so somewhat safe. And I could go back here and just cover up and sleep for days. And the place, believe it or not, that I, that I stayed the most was right here. There was a lady that lived right there in this clearing, and she had couches and chairs and, and tarps over the top, and it was a, a really comfortable place. And, and I liked her a lot because we used to tell each other jokes. And it wasn't until coming back today that I realized that everybody that lived in this alley is, is now dead. Well, when I was living outside, I felt really, not only just animals, I was, um, felt like someone's gonna attack me, you know, attack me in my tent. I actually put 
secured the, all the entrances, the zippers to my tent with dental floss and tied them while I was sleeping because uh, I was afraid that someone's going to come in my tent, which did happen. Um, I ended up becoming pregnant and I ended up putting the child for adoption and the VA helped me through that. Being homeless was the most violent thing I've lived through. It was more violent than any other thing that I've dealt with. When you're homeless, you have to know how to establish bounds without seeming to challenge someone. Because there's someone that's just the fact that they're challenged, then you've got to kill them or they have to try to kill you. I mean, it's ridiculous. You never know what you're gonna run into. I've seen people killed for the last swallow of wine, the last three or four puffs of a cigarette for a quarter. It is a struggle to stay alive. When I became pregnant, I really felt my, my life was at risk. I mean, I felt unsafe. The lady who I knew who owned the uh, auto shop would let me sleep in my car on her property. She would let me um, either park my car and sleep in my car here, and, or she would let me sleep in the building, uh, at the white building over there. They let, she'd let me sleep over there, or she'd let me sleep in my car on the property. And she welcomed me, she helped me, I could drink coffee, you know, she had a coffee pot in a bathroom. There was a tall fence and a, no one knew that I was actually staying there, so I felt safer. I think I hit like a real emotional bottom around two, July of 2010. It was like the time mark of my children being gone for two years. Um, I was going to the VA for counseling for the military sexual trauma. I had no money. I had given the baby up for adoption, and I just hit like an emotional low of, you know, where's my life going? I just gave up hope, you know, of everything. Sometimes I look at this park and it's really beautiful. And, and I can actually now, I can appreciate the beauty rather than it just being a place where, where life and misery happened. One part of, of being he back here in the park that I really found that I, that, that I missed was, was the sound of that tunnel. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And the joy of hearing your voice come back to you through that tunnel it's just, uh, I mean, I just can't even put it into words. It was so healing for me. I had gotten out of being incarcerated for a violation. And then I'm down at Skid Row. Now I see homeless, and you see homeless all the time, but you never really see homeless that are so bad off that they have rags tied on their feet. This particular person had rags tied on their feet, and I remember seeing them saying to myself, man, I sure feel sorry for that dude. You know, and then he walked up, you know, kind of just really dragging his feet, you know, and he that little snarl on his face, and he was so dirty, it was ridiculous. You could just see skin only through where his knuckles had rubbed through the dirt, and, he, and his hair was matted and two big nasty dreads. And, and uh, all the people on Skid Row, he walked down and he looked down at me and snarled and just jammed his hand in his pocket and pulled out the dollar and change, that's all he had, and shoved it at me and said, here man, I feel sorry for you. And something about that got me. What could, did he see in me that made him feel sorry for me out of all these people to, to feel sorry for? And something about that just did not settle well with me. From that very moment, I didn't want another drink. I didn't want any drugs. I didn't want any, I, from that moment, and I can actually truthfully say that. And I took that dollar and change and, and I got on the bus and came to the, the West Los Angeles VA Medical Center. 
and my life has changed from that moment. You know, when I finally, uh, when I finally made it through all of the different things I needed to go to and, and got to New Directions, the place was completely clean. And as soon as I got in there and I told them, I said, look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of, of, of getting high and I, I, my life needs to change. And they said, okay, well, you, you're in the right place. Welcome. I mean, welcome. New Directions is a long-term treatment program for veterans and our mission is to help them return to families and the community. And we do that by providing uh, comprehensive services. It had been a long time since I've had my own bed. This is my bed, a bed I call my own, that I make up myself every morning. Once you uh, go through detox, first phase you get a chance to go back to school. You learn about math, reading, writing. Your whole life is transformed. You're put back into society. When I got to second phase, I remember being in this room. This was my bed. I was able to watch television again and start my journey of going to school. I started being able to study. I started trying to learn to, to get my resume together. And you usually you stay in second phase a year to two years. But when you leave here, you'll have a bank account, you'll have a job, and you'll be ready to make your move to rejoin society. And everything started blooming right here. And I just can't believe the feelings and the memories that I get back from being in this room. This is outstanding. Wherever you go, you don't belong anywhere. That's the hardest thing about being homeless. This is the Lamb Center. It was important to me because it was a place I could go where I felt safe. This is the laundry area. They have like things like toothpaste, toothbrush, deodorant. I had a cell phone, but I couldn't really afford to a lot of the minutes, so I would use the phones here to call like, um, you know, for jobs or just to check my voicemail. I would get some help with, resume, with my resume. I went to job fairs and I got some clothes there for a job interview. They had everything you could possibly need there. And so it was a place to go. I can take a shower, I can eat, I can get things I need. But it's also a place where you're not trespassing anywhere. Well, I met Martha Valdez at the Lamb Center. She would go there as an outreach worker um, from the VA and she'd have a laptop and help me to get some of the documents and forms I would need to get care there. I just thought Ann was such a lovely person and her story was so heartbreaking. She was a person who had lost her children, she lost her family, she lost her housing, and she had lost herself along the way. Martha was telling me about the VASH program, you know, how do I can get into that and get into CWT, which is Compensated Work Therapy, and that would give me a job. And Gradually, the ultimate accomplishment was to be able to get her housed and to be able to get her back in the community. When I first became homeless, I started learning about the VA for the first time. Um, that really turned my life around, being able to have some medical care, and then that turned my life, and then having a job and having a house or an apartment to live in. I mean, that, those, that combination really works. A lot of people going out of the military aren't aware that they're eligible for a lot of these programs. Um, they have service-connected and non-service-connected benefits. They have medical benefits. They have psychiatric benefits. Um, they have educational opportunities. Right now, I work at Joe's Crab Shack in Fairfax, Virginia. Um, I'm a host there. Thank you for coming to Joe's. Um, have you been here before? No, I haven't. And I also clean the restaurant before we open in the morning, and I do some uh, fruit prep also, but I'm a, mainly I'm a host there. To have money coming in again and it's steady income and going to work every day is really fantastic. Having that routine is really good for me. Paying my bills, being responsible, you know, that feels really great. Thank you for coming to Joe's. Right now, I'm presently attending two schools. I'm attending uh, Santa Monica College for one portion of my computer information system, and I'm a junior at Cal State LA, um, also in computer information systems. I work for the Department of Veterans Affairs as a computer assistant. Okay, I'll take care of that for you. All right, goodbye. I'm able to, at my job, 
help people with computer problems. I know every software, I know everything about how to repair the computers. When someone has a need, I'm able to fill that need with computer knowledge. Oh, is, that, is this where you go, you go to? Yes, okay. that's it. Okay, okay, thank you. One, two, three. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. The new Directions Choir is comprised of really just what it is. We have formerly homeless soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. My name is Carlton Griffin, and I spent 26 years on the streets. The choir has been, uh, for me, is like a rock for me to lean upon, for, uh, for me to always hold on to. America, God shed his grace on thee. There is a healing power of music. When I was homeless, it saved me from despair. And then when I was getting my life back, it, it gave my soul peace. And crown thy good brotherhood. It was to let the, the person that was still suffering know that change is possible. And crown thy good brotherhood. With everything that's happening, I'm, I'm, I'm fully employed, I'm going to school, I have the choir, I'm, I have my service. I speak with my sons all the time. In fact, I wound up getting married here at the facility, which was really outstanding. My wedding was the first time that me and all of my brothers and sisters had been together in 20 years. I was, I was so pleased. We continue to talk now. It's meant everything in the world to me to have a place of my own where I can call home, I can close the door, and it's my home. I wonder you know, about my children. I wonder you know, if I were to get a higher paying job someday, will I be able to support the children again? When would I be ready to have them? I think about things like that. At the end of the day, I'm able to go home. I'm able to turn the key, and I can go sit down and be safe, free, comfortable, clean, and open a refrigerator that's filled with food. Who'd have thought it?